New on Curiosity Stream. She was a loving wife, a devoted mother. She also stole atomic secrets and gave them to the Soviets. Meet the woman whose deception kick-started the Cold War on the spy who stole the atom bomb. And... What if they catch you? Then I shall be shot. They're coming! Come back! Relive history's most death-defying escapes. It's impossible escapes. Civil War. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember, it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. Hey, all, it's Miles. Thank you guys for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Have you heard our newest podcast? It's called The Greatest Story Never Told. Download it today on Radio.com. Be sure to subscribe. New episodes are uploaded every Tuesday at noon. Unfortunately, what you're about to hear is real. The members of this radio program are simply not that bright. Or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. Kicks. <laughs> The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say, shake your radio more than three times and you're playing with it. You're listening to the men's room. Hello, go. Welcome to season 15, episode number 3,387. Along with Steve the Throw Hill, the Ted Smith, Woo! and Mike Hawk. Montgomery! And you are the Metro. On tap today, the very last Who Sucks Less for 2020. Less, less, less. less yes. Less. We will play Profile This, plus headlines, men's room, shout of the day, fun will listener emails, and everyone's favorite, TV time with Ted. Click, clock, drink a day drive. All right, here we go. Virginia man has lucky feeling. He buys 160 lottery tickets, then wins on every single one. Meanwhile, a woman who is sexually attracted to, quote, objects finds a briefcase, and now her search is done. In Turkey, a goat, a sheep, and three lambs have been terrorizing the streets. Florida man who tried to uh, break into home through the window is now lying under a sheet. And two California men think it would be fun to shoot rubber bullets at each other. Now one California man. That is all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now, here's the question. Hola, bitch holas. Yeah, that's right. My voice is shot. What can I do? I'm drinking tea, and I freaking hate tea. Just to put it in perspective. Yeah, two cups of tea. No, one is eggnog. Bro. I don't have a voice either. Oh, oh, you have eggnog? I do have eggnog. Where the hell did you get eggnog? It's in the fridge. You're kidding me. Nope. Discovered it right before the show. Hey, whatever two NFL teams face off in the AFC wildcard game on January 10th, they'll be making history. Why? Because the game will be simulcast on Nickelodeon. And true to Nickelodeon, the game will feature kid-focused content. This includes visual filters so the players, they might have bunny ears, googly eyes, or get virtually slimed in real time. And if that sounds ridiculous, it's because it is ridiculous. But the idea is that this will get children into football and then keep their interest. Now, time will tell, but a lot of things that we discover as children actually do keep our interest into adulthood. You know what I'm saying, bronies? But hell, it's why Legoland, the Florida theme park, it's planning an expansion. In fact, Legoland has expanded several times in the nine years that it's been open because people that like Legos like Legos a lot. And you discover them as a kid, and they tend to stick with you. Not me. I don't like them. But that's what we're talking about today. That journey from childhood to adulthood. Usually it changes a lot of our interests. But a few things, well, we take it with us. So, maybe you went to a car show as a kid. Now you're a gearhead. Or dad took you fishing or hunting. And now you do it all the time to this day. Or maybe... 
You do something as simple as watch The Mandalorian today because you saw Star Wars when it came out in 1977. Yeah, at the theater. At the theater, yes. I'm old, but that's why The Mandalorian is still in my life. So today's question is this. What did you get into or like as a kid that you still enjoy today? Be part of the big show called 206-421-ROCK. Like The Men's Room on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Men's Room Live. And send those emails to the men's room at KISW.com. New on Curiosity Stream. Just because it hasn't been done before doesn't mean you can't. Watch Earth's greatest minds forge our path to a better tomorrow. It's engineering the future and... Jaws, Star Wars, The Godfather, E.T., the biggest movies have even bigger music. From King Kong to The Dark Knight. See how musicians scored Hollywood's greatest hits on great film composers' music of the movies. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. You're the one who protects the flock, and that requires an eye for detail. Because when safety and well-being are on the line, it's the details that can save lives. Even when no one else is watching, you see everything. Granger gets you, and we're here for you. And all the ones who get it done with a wide range of safety products and solutions. Plus board-certified safety consultants here to answer your questions. Call, click Grainger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. All the shows and away we go. Welcome to Season 15, Episode number 3,387. What a large and in charge program we have for you today. Guaranteed future repeat. How the hell that we're mailing it in? <laughs> Only three shows to go here in 2020. This is uh, the last day we will do Who Sucks Less. Steve, you bring us uh, three stories from the news each oh, and every yeah. week. All of them suck to some degree. Uh, it's up to us to determine out of the three stories which one sucks the least. How are we looking this week? Uh, it's funny to say how we're looking because uh, each of these three stories, you may have seen more of this person than you wanted to. That's oh. the best way to put it. Okay. All right. Okay. That's coming up you with uh, Who Sucks Less. Are these personal or regular? No, these are regular. All, All right. right. Yeah. None of us are yeah. getting thrown yeah. under the bus. <laughs> I was like, maybe we don't tell that story. That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, as we uh, as we get on to the question today, uh, obviously, uh, the imprinting of your childhood is uh, obviously very important and playing a part in who you become as an adult. Sure. Obviously, there's different things you learn as far as rules of the home and all the different things that go on as far as how to socially interact with your friends and your family. And there's all kinds of different things, but... But depending on where you grew up, how you grew up, there are a number of things that, uh, as you say, Steve, kind of uh, last with you uh, for your lifetime. And uh, those things that you enjoy at those points in time, because let's face it, a lot of people like school. Most people do not. No, I hate it. There's all kinds of things that, uh, you know, it's not that it's the worst thing in the world. That's where you learn how to be social, how to learn Mm -hmm. to interact with other people, how to do teamwork and everything else. But for the most part, you know, it's uh, it's. It's, it's yeah, it had important. to be there. It was mandatory. Right. But when you had a little free time, when you had some free time, you were uh, you were basically doing hopefully what you wanted to do. Sometimes you could afford that. Mm-hmm. Other times your parents could not afford that. Sure, depending on the situation. Oftentimes it, it, times were tough. Depending on the food that was available in the refrigerator. Oh yeah, uh, you get a little creative as a child and come up with some things that end up being staples and. Somewhat of a comfort thing for right, you. Right, to this sure. Ted, I, I don't know, uh, and, and by the way, guys, uh, Steve and I are both losing our voice, so this is never going to be heard again because we can barely <laughs> talk. What? How old were you the, the first time you went to Disney World? Oh, 19. 19 years old. So you didn't go there as a kid? No, we couldn't afford it. My cousins would always go, but my specific family couldn't. So when I was 19, my uncle said... If you could afford a flight, you could so, stay with us. So basically, every single member of your family did this every year. And they told you all about all your cousins, <laughs> all the people that you grew up with who <laughs> they were They would friends. do it like every three to four years, right? A group of them would go. And it right. just sounded like a enchanted fantasy land. Now, were you a big Disney fan before you actually went? I know you're a fan of the world, right? I understand that. But I'm saying, like, as far as their movies went, because they have gotten better with their movies later. 
there was kind of a lull between like the 70s and 90s. Not you know? really. Because like, before just... Lion King, all they showed was the stuff that are Snow yeah. White and the Seven Dwarfs, like crap that you, maybe you saw, but like you probably saw it in school. You, you saw the Fantasia. Theater. Right. right. It yeah. was more just kind of like Miles saying, just more than like my cousins would all go every three or four years. So you just hear about it. It's, a, fan, don't, it's a fantasy world. And I don't care who you are as a kid. It's just, it's like McDonald's. Sure. Right. Like you right, just right. want to go. It's the magic kingdom for a reason. Actually, you realize oh, yeah. McDonald's might be the best answer to this. I don't know what McDonald's does, but they imprint on kids so hard. Well, yeah. They did a taste test with kids, right? They were like 12 years old or something. So they had McDonald's, Burger King. Wendy, somebody else. They made sure all the burgers looked the same. And 100% of the time, McDonald's won the taste test. Now, the next time they did the taste test, they wrapped a McDonald's burger, saying the Burger King wrapper, but whatever. But the thing that was wrapped in the McDonald's wrapper was not McDonald's. The kids still picked the McDonald's burger. Sure, sure. Even though it was not a McDonald's burger. And then as adults, we still stop by McDonald's. Like, somehow McDonald's... Mm -hmm. From the time all, you're old enough to eat solid food until the day you die. Somehow it's part of your life. Right? I, I saw a post the other day. but Basically, the synopsis was somebody said, hey, I, I didn't realize at the time that that was the last Happy Meal I'd ever order. Oh, right, right, right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Just because now I'm getting two hammers. Sure. Like, I'm moving on up. You know what I mean? There's and, not enough in Happy Meal. If they put more oh, food yeah. in a Happy Meal, you'd still order a Happy Meal. Sure. If, if they, they said a double dinner, hamburger Happy Meal? Yeah, we put a Big Mac and a, you'd be like, cool, man. Just give me the Happy Meal. I yeah. think I stopped ordering them at six. At six years old, really? <laughs> I was a fat kid. Oh, so it was just a matter of the food and just how much food. <laughs> I, mean, you I don't know if it was six, but yeah, early on. Yeah, yeah. early on. But that, I will say this: like the same way you like spam. I mean, I'm looking up Taylor Ham pork roll right now. Right. And I mean, we ate it as kids. I still love it. It's disgusting when I describe it to people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now let me ask you a question. Now, back a little bit. Uh, back to the Disney World conversation. All right. So you said when you were 19 years old that your uncle said if you could if you could get a plane ticket, correct, then you could join them. Rao, did this include your brother and your sister? Did Negative. They, they they were not invited. No. So they had never gone at this point in time. No. So, so was this one of the few things as a family that you did that your brother and sister did not do? You know what I mean? Correct. They started, they ended up coming down years later when my uncle got like the entire family together. And, All right. And, and me and my siblings had jobs so we could afford it. Sure. Yeah. My dad never had a job basically the whole time growing up, really, that he kept. So well, <laughs> that, that, that's the thing. Like when Never uncle, his fault, though, I'm guessing. When, when uncles. Never. Had, when, never. One time. He, he had done his time in the army. When, when uncles and aunts <laughs> said, when they, when they come to your defense, mm -hmm. that means that they are a little bit just. Uh, not happy with their own brothers and sisters. I do remember oh, that. Yeah. So basically by saying that, he was saying like, look, I've asked you 20 times to come down here to Florida <laughs> on a family vacation. You've never done it. Y your son wants to go so bad. He asked me every question about everything in the world. And you know what? F it. I'm taking him. I right. think Uncle Phil finally got to the point where we had just gotten old enough because we would visit him at the beach. Right, know? right. But I think I must have just said something like, you know, like, Phil, why'd you never invite us? Like. I invited your father every year. Every time. Yeah. Like, what? He just didn't tell you guys. He didn't <laughs> yeah. want to go and couldn't afford it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when you finally went, well, you you continued to go, right? It was awesome. Right. So then, like, the next time the whole family got together, I went and my mom went. And then, like, the last time in 2011, we had, like, everybody. Like, my brother and his kids came. My sister came. Everybody came. Okay. All right. And, 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 and truly, Disney is a special place. People who love it Disney... Is. I mean, they are, if you are it's odd into Disney, I mean, it's full blown. The you people gotta, who are really into it. And you, you know? got to buy into it. You, you know what do, I mean? but the way you do it is different. You were 19 and it's the experience of Disney World. Correct. And there are people that go to Disney World as adults because they love Disney. They won't, yeah, go, they won't go to SeaWorld or whatever else they build up since then. Correct. They're, or if they have Universal or an MGM, uh, MGM is part of their park, but yeah. if they're Universal, <laughs> they're, they're not going. No, they, like, right. I mean, right. Some people in our family still won't leave the property because there's no magic. I can't believe. I moved past it. I cannot believe that Disney like Universal. has not yeah. put out a Calvin and Hobbes with Calvin peeing on, like, Universal Studios. Because it's like that. And Universal, you know I mean? have, by far, look, I'm a Disney park freak, but Universal has much better rides. They're like Spider-Man roller coasters <laughs> right. and different rides that are that are very, very cool to deal with. Back to the Future at one point. In time, sure, that but it's was Disney. Popular. It was popular. It was a great ride down there. Yeah, and, and Disney, it, again, like... As an adult, it's a tiresome week. Because, like, my uncle we call daytime Mickey. He <laughs> went you up early. My cousin Pat used to be nighttime Mickey. Mm -hmm. You go find the few bars there <laughs> are down there. But yeah. I would, you know me, I would get up early and then stay up late. So of I course. Was, I was, you know, as Mike would say, luggage under the eyes. Sure, Mickey. sure. <laughs> I, I, was about, uh, I was about 20, 21 years old. I was at Universal Studios. 
And they had just opened a few years before that, so it was fairly new. They're, they're adding rides as we're there. And that was the first time that I'd ever been in a ride where basically you're watching the screen. Yeah. And yeah, the yeah. seats move up and down. Sure. Kind of, you know, you lose your stomach, but you're really not going anywhere. You're just kind of sitting there. I thought it was great. And then they were going to have this, uh, they're going to do Jaws. They had a huge lake in the middle yeah, of the place. Yeah, yeah. So they're going to do, but they do the performance like twice a day. They do once, one point in time, and then later on in the night or whatever the deal is. So I'm, uh, I'm getting my picture taken with George Jetson. All right. <laughs> all right. Nice. George Jetson in, in the George Jetson costume and all that stuff. And I remember when, when I got the picture you done. You kind of look like George Jetson. When I, got, well, when, I, when I was done with the picture with him, I just turned to him like, hey, uh, George, man, what, what, what time does the Jaws thing start? He's like, dude, you got like 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> dude. And I was like, all right, man, because mascots aren't supposed to talk to you. Right, right. I mean, for the most part. You know what I mean? Like, well, that's they the should Disney it. Well, that's what I'm that's saying. That's Disney. Like, he's well, like, most yeah. mascots shouldn't talk. Well, you're, you're very firm. If you're a I am. If you're a human or, you know, if you're... Well, okay. sure, if you're a human. I'm just saying, if you're a mascot inside of a costume, you shouldn't... You know what? I don't like know why... Notre Bugs Dame, the Notre Dame guy, he, he talks. Right, that leprechaun could talk, but he's a right. dude. That leprechaun yeah. could talk. Yeah. I'm just saying, I bet George Jetson was in... <laughs> but George Jetson was, was so casual was about it. It was in a like, costume. Yeah, it's like 10, 15 minutes, dude. <laughs> I was like, thanks, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> thanks, George. It's just so weird to talk to George Jetson. You know? like, that's, uh, that's crazy. So our uh, question, what did you like or get into as a kid that you still enjoy today? I think one of the things that uh, you can say for a fact is if you just if you just envision your room growing up as a kid mm-hmm. and you look at and you think about the posters you had on the wall, all the different things, the, the, the toys you had, the electronics you had, right, right. the music you had, all these things played a big influence uh, in your life from your bed sheets who you were repping on your bed sheets. Mm -hmm. It's kind of how your room was designed. It was all about, it kind of represented a snapshot of who you were. That was my original man cave. It's the one place I could put up the crap I liked. And it's the only place. Kids posters, chicks in bikinis, all that kind of garbage. Do you remember the chicks? Uh, One I remember specifically was Heather Thomas. One was Farrah Fawcett. She had a pink bikini. There was Farrah Fawcett with the super... Pencil erasers poking out of the front there. And then a random chick, I don't know who she was, but was it like Spencer's Gifts or something where they had like the big poster thing yep. you flip through? Yeah. I saw her and I'm like, I'm going to buy that poster. Not only I that, don't know her name. I don't know if she's an that, actress. You can buy a poster and go from the floor all the way to the top. Like oh, an yeah. eight foot, nine foot poster. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't Floyd the wall or. Yeah, I didn't have a chick with a giant poster. But I had pictures from Riot Carey that I'd cut out of a magazine and put oh, on construction yeah. paper. Sure, And sure. then hung those on the wall. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, all right. I think in our era, <laughs> the one that cuts through, there were, there were a lot of great bands. But as far as being a kid during this era, without question, uh, undeniably, there were great bands. Zeppelin, we used to listen to Zeppelin. We were trying to figure out Pink Floyd. I think sure. we might have been a little young for that uh, at a certain point in time. But, you know, we loved The Who. We loved Boston. We loved all these things. But nothing, nothing meant as much to me and all my friends than Kiss. Nothing could mean it, as much, but you didn't realize that they were designed for children, even though they deny it. But exactly. Like, the Who was great. Aerosmith was great. And you're right. All those bands, they were doing their thing then. But I Kiss, did, they... You, look, didn't, you didn't have an Aerosmith lunchbox. Because they did not spit blood or breathe fire. I would gladly... Etch Aerosmith's logo and Van Halen's logo into my school desk. Right. But the lunchbox... I wanted to kiss. They didn't have pinball machines. They didn't have holiday specials. They didn't do all the crap now, that Kiss now, did. Since that point in time, Kiss has not released one song that I give two flying Fs about. Oh, they're terrible. I mean, maybe, you know, like they had a few hits in the early 80s, late 80s, like Lick It Up, Heaven's on Fire. They terrible weren't the, songs. They were not great songs. They had a disco song, which maybe is, in retrospect, one of their better songs sure. that I like. And I was made for loving you, but, but that wasn't yeah. what we were listening to. And Kiss has not evolved from that point. No. I mean, granted, they've had members that have changed. Uh, Eric Carr was a drummer for a while after they let go. Of people. But that's Chris the going up. You actually outgrow them. That yeah. music doesn't sit with you and you go, oh, man. this." You can have a moment of nostalgia, but rarely do you just put on an album and go, this was awesome. You kind of go, see, that Jesus was, Christ. I, I, I do have a couple Kiss albums, and I listened to them not too long ago, and I'm like, this is great stuff. It's so simple. It's so basic. It's so cheesy. Right. I can't believe they got away with it. <laughs> it's almost like, you know, it's it's insane. Like, who didn't know the village people were gay? Right. I didn't know. Nobody else I had no knew. idea. We had no idea. You know, like, how did I miss this? You know what I'm saying? Because we were children. Right. Honest exactly. to God. My well, parents used to laugh. They'd buy me a kiss album, right? And I would always get in. I'm real excited. And my father would just laugh and laugh and laugh. And I never understood what he found so funny. Now that I'm an adult... And look, I can listen mm-hmm. to the early records and go like, right, I remember this, it's decent, but 
I understand why he laughed and like, sure. this is ridiculous. I went to my mom, like any other kid around Halloween, and said, I want to be Gene Simmons. And so when you show your mom a picture of Gene Simmons, she's like, ugh. That's a know, tough recreate, How man. do I make these boots? How do I get these spiked shoulder pads? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? How do I look like somebody from Gore? Right. Essentially. You know what I'm saying? And, and she couldn't do that. But what was the album? Was it uh, where they were all in suits? Dressed to Kill. Dressed to Kill. I will say, in your defense, my brother, I didn't hear him listen to a ton of Kiss, but there was Kiss stuff everywhere in his bedroom. Yeah, because yeah. they, were, they were just, right. fun. every other band was just music, right? But when you're that young... For music to move you, there almost has to be more because you have no life experience to relate to sure, the who's sure. saying I don't write. But Kiss was real simple. Like, mm-hmm. you don't have to be smart, so, and yeah. we're not good. So here it is. Now, I'll keep in mind, Ted, when I would go to church at that point in time, I had uh, floods that were probably plaid. I had a sweater with a you know a collared shirt that I'd wear underneath it, and maybe some just hush puppy shoes. All right, that was kind of how you know I would dress up if I was hush dressing puppies. up to go someplace. It's a math of Catholic now with, classic. Now with this one, <laughs> now with this, with this, with this, uh, this Halloween costume, my mom had to go buy me a suit, and there was a place in town called Gabriel Brothers, and I, I remember, remember that. that the suit was thirty eight dollars, <laughs> but that was the first suit I ever had. And the reason that I got the suit was because that was the only way that she could come up with making my costume. Ah, okay. So from that point in time, I had a suit. Now, the makeup job she did on me, it was like a, there was a white circle in front of my face like I was a mime. <laughs> All right? So, like, the makeup didn't really go any more than right. just an oval, like an egg. Mm, right. And then she tried her best to kind of like eyeliner in, and it, it did not work out. Yeah, parents really struggled. Did nobody know you were somebody from Kiss? The suit threw everyone off. Why were you in a suit? Because, because they had an album at the time, well, probably a couple years earlier, but they had an album called Dress to Kill, which was kind of notorious for them because on that particular cover, the four members of the band, they have their full makeup on, but they're wearing business suits. Yes. Okay. So okay. I could replicate that, but I could not replicate that. But that's not what anyone's trying to replicate. Right, in the boots. All right, yeah. nice. But that's not what you want it to be. And I wanted, if like, you said I wanted, you wanted to be I wanted Gene blood, Simmons, I want blood coming out of the corner of my mouth. You don't want to wear a suit. Right. But to this day, don't get me wrong, man. If Kiss comes around, I'm interested. I'm interested in their tour. I follow them on Twitter. It, they're not my favorite band, but they're still a part of my life to the point where if they did a Kiss documentary, eight-part special I'd on watch Netflix... An I mean, I'm all over. They were integral yeah, to my child. All over. I mean, I am interested. I want to know what's sure. going on. I've read books about Kiss as an adult. You yeah. Know, like, I mean, it's just, it's still something that interests me. They were that important. It's so much so that I know what a douchebag Gene Simmons is. Yeah, but he's... But I still don't care. Like, I can fight. I, I, I know how cheesy Paul Stanley is. Yeah, I but don't Paul care. Stanley's funny because he's yeah. so cheesy and doesn't know it. He's like David Hasselhoff. <laughs> So our question, what did you like or uh, get into as a kid that you still enjoy today? 206-421-ROCK. New on Curiosity Stream. Just because it hasn't been done before doesn't mean you can't. Watch Earth's greatest minds forge our path to a better tomorrow. It's engineering the future. And Jaws, Star Wars, The Godfather, E.T., the biggest movies have even bigger music. From King Kong to The Dark Knight. See how musicians scored Hollywood's greatest hits on great film composers' music of the movies. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. 5X480. Dayton B100 V-Belt, one of the many parts Granger carries. It's also the item that helped Rob carry the day. The job was on hold, deadline fast approaching. But a quick search on Granger.com and Rob found his part. And with same day pickup at his local branch, he and his crew got the job done safely and on time. Get supplies and solutions for every industry with real time product availability. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. 99.9 KISW and KISW HD1 Seattle. What did you want to like or get into as a kid that you still enjoy today? 206-421-ROCK. Uh, a couple of people here says when I was growing up, I loved cars. I always had Hot Wheels, Matchbox, and any other brand I could get my hands on. I'm 48, 
Still have uh, most of my childhood cars, as well as hundreds more, many from that era. We used to work with a guy that had yeah, did. hundreds of Hot Wheel cars. Uh, his wife made him keep them in the basement. That Well, that's how life works. I know that. There's something that you still like. Your wife makes you put it in the that's basement. That's why, kids, if you're listening to this program right now, all the things that you see in your room, you'll never be able to do that again in any form or fashion. Now, you might keep it, but if you get married... It's going to go in your basement. College, it'll be a happy medium. Then after that, it's all over. No my, more posters, no more crap like that. My signed Kiss Love Gun Gold record. Mm -hmm. Guess where it is? It's in the basement. It's, you're goddamn right it's in the basement. Yeah. You're not, allowed to, you're not allowed to have any you fun. You can have it. No fun allowed. I don't want to see it. Like, okay. Yeah, I had a friend. They're from the Seattle area. And I remember like his wife at the time, we went to her family's house. And I walked in the basement. And I was like... This looks like my Uncle Tim's basement or whatever. Yeah. They're like, what do you mean? I was like, you got the beer signs, this and that. And that's what it dawned on me. Like, hey, every guy's basement looks a lot alike because you can't have it upstairs. It's all your crap. Right? And there's always some article, like Maxim or Bro Bible yeah. or whatever. They'll come out like, Dad, you need to take down that Scarface poster in your living room. You're too old for that. You're supposed to be yeah. running out when you're 30. No, you're not married. I know, that's, that's what I'm saying. saying right? I got a yeah. signed slash poster. Guess where it is? In your basement. It's in the basement. In your basement. <laughs> Ted don't have a basement. I don't have a basement. You need a right. basement. When do you get a basement? Man, I love hanging out in a basement or a garage. Do, yes, you do. If you don't have one, it's like a fun adventure. Especially like, a detached. When dudes come over, right? Yeah. So, you know, chick come over, they hang out upstairs, they drink wine, they talk. Dude comes over, let's go down to the basement. Like, right, because we're surrounded by the stuff that we like. Right. And you got a garage. Yeah. You got a garage. Got a like garage. A, you whip that kitchen door open, you go, ah, the garage in here. <laughs> But if you have a detached garage, somebody's going to... That's all yours. They want to put shoes on, maybe put a coat on, walk back there and find out what the hell you're doing. I think the detached garage is the better lifestyle. Uh, Miles, we call that the shop. Yeah, exactly. The shop. That's it. Right. Where call it the shop and no one get made or something. Where you play cornhole. What, to, what did you like or get into as a kid that you still enjoy today? 206-421-ROCK. Yeah, if you have a shop or garage, you won't see me most of the time oh I'm visiting. Dude, exactly. One of, my best, one of my best friends growing up, uh, his, his family had a detached garage. He had the upstairs. Bless, Bless you. He had the upstairs uh, oh, room. beautiful. So that, he yeah. lived above the garage. And I mean, it was anarchy. Yes. It was awesome. Sleepovers, it's like you weren't even in a house with adults or nothing. Man. If I had a detached garage, I might try to get in trouble more. And those parents were smart. Like, stick them yeah, just the put them there. He wants to live up there. We'll get him a space heater. No big deal. <laughs> get him a space heater. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Hello, Lisa. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 So, how are you guys today? We're doing great, Lisa. We only got a couple more left, so we're just mailing it in right now. We're thinking about ordering a pizza. Hey, I just got some pizza, Hut, so hey, it's a good idea. It tastes good. Anyway, I, I like this question. Uh, hang on, that. sorry. Never, as long as we're what? talking about it, I got to back up here. We go stuff crust, regular, traditional. What we get? Uh, just, just regular hand toss. All right, all right. Uh, I like a good hand toss. Yeah, that's what I call my penis. Oh, hey, oh. <laughs> uh, so, what did anyway. you get into? Um, I was always a big fan of Power Rangers as a kid, amongst other things. Uh, but it came back, uh, or it came onto Netflix recently, and uh, I was expressing my my joy for that. And my friend was just like, "Dude, you need to calm down." I'm like, "I, I can't, I can't do that." And I kind of like, I got chills, you know, all the the nostalgia was just coming right back. Okay, but how did you feel when you actually watched it? When I was a kid or this time? As an adult, this time. Oh, I just, it's very cheesy. Okay. It's very cheesy, what, but, was, but, but I didn't care about that as a kid. I, may, I mainly like the Power Rangers, or the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie, which I found on YouTube recently for free to watch, and I was, oh my gosh, I was no, like, what, everybody what, leave me alone. Is I this watch the it. one that came out like five years ago? No, this is the old one. Okay, I took my kid, my son and his buddy, to see the most recent Power Rangers movie, maybe five years ago, somewhere around there. It wasn't as cheesy. I was never into them. It, I was, just, it, was, not, it was not bad. I know that. Okay. It, no, it was. It was. It was it, actually pretty bad. I, I, but. I, was, I was past the point of Power Rangers. But if memory serves correct, one of those dudes did something really, really heinous. Is that? Is that? Am I? Yeah, like I can't remember what it was. Somebody or like it was they, something. They real found like two up. heads in his garbage or something. I mean, like whatever it was. When you read this, you're like, oh god. Like, this is... I know yeah, you never saw bad. his face or any of that Like, because you could never see their faces. They were just, like, the like, Green Ranger, the Ranger, Red Ranger, Gold Ranger. But this guy did something completely messed up. Not that you couldn't replace him. Right. You know. Who, uh, what color Ranger was your favorite Ranger? It was pink. Kimberly. Okay. All right. And, and Tommy. Tommy was... <laughs> but he, he had a range of different colors for his... For his uh, now, how did you get colors. different colors? Like, if I'm the Green Ranger, why would I suddenly become the Blue Ranger? Well, because when you, if you want the quick version, the Green Ranger was an evil ranger who was sent to go take 
you know, down all the Power Rangers. So uh-huh. when he was selected uh, and became good after that, after I'm sorry to spoil it for anybody, but uh, he <laughs> changed colors then. Okay, I see, I see. That explains a lot. I just I never knew. Okay. Yeah, I uh, never Bob, got into Power Rangers, man. It's, one of the former actors who played the television Power Rangers, he, uh, he's doing six years for stabbing his roommate to death with, two, with a sword. Okay. Yeah, that'll do it. That's pretty weird. That is weird. Also, uh, like, how do you only get six years? Uh, that's, I was going to ask that question, but I don't know. I took my kid to see that the recent Power Rangers movie. I did not enjoy it, but it's not made for me. Whatever. But on Stranger Things, the TV show, this character shows up, and I, I know I know who this actor is. I cannot place it anywhere. I refuse to Google it because I still enjoy the struggle. Come to find <laughs> out, he was the Red Ranger in the recent movie. Hmm. Oh. And then I hated that I knew that. I'm like, that's Damn. not why I want to recognize your face. What did you like or get into as a kid that you still enjoy today? 206-421-ROCK. They get a lot more pub, I feel like, than Captain Planet did. They absolutely did. That, it was massive. I never understood it. But it was massive. And my kids were younger. They really enjoyed it. Did not understand. Uh, but the Power Rangers were huge. But she makes a good point. There's like TV shows you loved as a kid, right? And then you think you might enjoy it if you watch it now. And we've tried to watch Dukes of Hazard, right? Mm-hmm. As a kid, great show. It is some of the worst crap I've ever seen mm-hmm. in my life. Six Million Dollar Man saw an episode of that recently. It's, it's really bad. And I felt bad. Well, they're going to reboot bad. Fantasy Island. I wonder how that's going to be. I don't know. I mean, but how do you think we'd feel if we watched like the original one now? But that's a, and that's a reboot. So right, like people re- that right, like Hawaii Five O now, I bet a lot of them never even knew Hawaii Five O. Never knew that show existed. But when I, mean, I, when I was a kid, it was Batman on TV. It what? was it was Ultraman. It was Speed Racer. It was a lot of that stuff. Speed was, Racer was terrible. Man. HR Puffin stuff was on. Sure. Like I could watch the Batman TV show now because it's always been what it is. Like I knew it was campy then. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. and, and it stayed campy, and I'm I'm kind of okay with that. But it's a, like the A Team, loved it as a kid. Love the A Team as a kid. Yeah, me too. Try to watch it now as an adult, you will rip your eyeballs out of your head. That show is so god awful. It which is weird because movies do transcend better. Movies at the transcend same time better. they do. Sure. You know what I mean? Where a TV show does not for they some just, reason. I don't know. But if you go back and you watch Sanford and Son, still or, funny. You know what I mean? Or the the bunkers, Archie Bunker. You know, mm-hmm. like the, the those bunkers. those still hold up. You know what I mean? They do. I, I agree with that. It's. I think more for the, the geared toward the younger crowd, they don't hold up. The younger crowd probably doesn't get most of the social stuff. Right, but exactly. one of the few things that I maintain will always, at least for me personally, Bugs Bunny. Like, oh, yeah. If it is on, I will watch it, and I laugh as much now as I did when I was a kid, and there's not an episode I have not seen. Well, the jokes are different from an adult from a child. So the ones you remember as a child, oh, you remember. The slapstick But stuff. the ones you missed because you were too young, are the ones you're getting now, which you never picked up at the time. And you're like, boy, they were racist. Exactly. <laughs> you had no idea. Well, even recently for me, as my buddy's kid, I've gotten back into the Muppets. You know, but the Muppets, it's almost like the Batman TV show. Somehow, no matter how old I get, the, they still resonate in some way. It's silly. It's still kind it of is. funny. I don't understand why I still like it. That said, if you like the Muppets, be sure to listen to today's Shot of the Day. Yeah. Oh, oh. Or maybe not. No, definitely. Listen to today's shout of the day. What did you like or get into as a kid that you uh, still enjoy today? 206-421-ROCK. Hello, Brandon. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bitch. Hola. Hola. So, uh, yeah. When I was a kid, I was uh, very much into music. And uh, I played guitar and me and my friends uh, had a band and whatnot. But, yeah, I still like to play today. Do you uh, are you do you still stay in touch with those uh, guys you played with? Oh yeah, they're all pretty much my brothers now. Like we've all like had a room together and whatnot. Do you guys still jam every once in a while? Uh, when we can. Do you remember? Really have... Do you remember hey, the what? songs you guys were playing at that time that was that you wanted to learn and be able to play that were you know covers of your bands that you liked? Yeah, we played a lot of punk music, so like we would we covered a Dead Kenny song, it was a police truck. All right. And uh and then there was like two other songs we played from popular punk bands. Uh I don't know if you guys would know them though. Oh the popular <laughs> ones, yes, go ahead. What are the popular yeah. what are the popular <laughs> punk bands that you speak of? <laughs> well we would play a song called Clear Channel by a band called Leftover Crack. <laughs> Leftover Crack and then, I like the name Legendary. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they were pretty legendary. Okay. And then we would play a song called Pure Evil by a band called No Cash. Okay. And well, you got to remember, a, a punk was very geographical. 
So there were different. Right. Chicago's got a punk scene. DC's got a different. And that punk was scene. A little New different. York's got a different punk scene. LA had a different punk scene, and they're all punk. But but you know, just different. Those, sounding, those bands man. weren't able to go into the other regions like wrestling, and you know what I mean. Right, right. They, they just they, oh, they, yeah. in a van yeah. that broke down, For and sure. half the time you get a flyer There'd up, be and fights, all they couldn't make it in, and they'd be snowed in or whatever. How old were you when you first yeah. started playing guitar? Uh, we were. Uh, I was in seventh grade when I first started. But when we were playing shows and whatnot, um, we were like teenagers, like 17. Okay. Are you still into punk music? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. You, can, all the time. you can check out some holiday in Cambodia or whatever the hell and, uh, and still enjoy it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. All right. Yeah. I feel like if you <laughs> like punk, you always like punk. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, it's yeah. I can say everybody I knew that grew up that liked punk or still likes punk. School, still loves it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just and, and, what, and what I classified as punk then, and what I thought was punk was was not really punk. So Black Flag was not punk, although I thought they were punk. They're somewhat punk, but not really. But Corros- they were advertising corrosion of conformity. Uh, I would say go- it's government, not punk. Government but issue. You know what I mean? All these. Say but people called Fugazi punk, and I'm like, are they or Bad Brains punk. punk? And that was not really. Punk. I always found that one odd. Right. So. Yeah. But GBH, that was a band. They sounded oh, yeah. punk. Right. Misfits were kind of punk, but in my mind, they massive, were too melodic. Massive Attack, maybe? Were they considered right. punk? I think so. I mean, it was just but a I, weird but thing. They're, but they're not. I mean, my I'm high not. school, Fugazi was just kind of the white guy band. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> right. <laughs> Seriously. Because, like, there was always dudes that, like, like rock, like we play, like sure. Metallica or whatever. Right, right. But there was always specific, like, certain dudes like Gogo and certain guys like Fugazi. And I was just, mm-hmm. I had no idea who Fugazi was probably until I met you guys. Even yeah. though I grew up there. And if, you don't, awesome. and if you're not and from then, that area or Prince, you don't even know what the hell Go-Go is. Right, uh, exactly. Right. I'm speaking a weird language right now. But <laughs> I was always Team Go-Go. I, was I, mean, like, I don't know what that is. Who's the biggest Go-Go artist of all time? Easily. Hands Chuck down. Brown. Uh, I, would, I, would Go-Go. Do, I would debate Shaka Khan. So, I mean, as far as... See, I'm about to do goes. it to you. Right. I wouldn't give her Go-Go. All right, okay. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. She's like the punk artist. Exactly. Yeah, like, Chuck Brown's called the godfather of Go-Go. I know, but Chaka made it popular. You know what I mean? She had a few songs. I don't know if she was go-go overall. Okay. It's like, <laughs> but see, this is what happens. Maybe <laughs> she's the grandmother of go-go. I don't, but now we're doing it. But, right, but exactly. think about it. Like, things that, that would go-go. bug me is like, Green Day would say, well, you know, we were kind of punk earlier. And I'm like, this is not punk at all. This is no. pop, right? right? You can like them or not yeah. like. In my mind, they were not punk. Well, they, had Cal- they, had, no, they had that California bubblegum crap. The, bu- the bubblegum punk. punk, punk. To me. It's not punk to me either. But that's the L.A. thing. LA but, that's me being, poison. but that's me being a purist, and to this day, I still hate that Because that's what we do. I know. It's so <laughs> stupid. I will say, mindset. I when know, you're a kid, though, the music you listen to, like, to this day, like, I still have a soft spot for anything Motown. It's my dad liked to play Motown. Sure. And then, like, there's still just Irish folk songs I like, because my mom would play Irish folk songs. Huh. I did not hear a lot of Irish folk growing up, but did hear a lot of Motown. Being around the <laughs> Pennsylvania area, you heard a hell of a lot of polka. That's a fact. Good guy. He's not even <laughs> God, kidding. God, man. Everything was Think polka. about polka music. It's, you should not hear polka music unless you voluntarily went to a place. The only place. polka that I can even take is the chicken dance. My man. That's the only one where I'd be like, and you that's know what? it's funny. It's fun. It's a fun song. Polka music that, is... I'm out. I love when you go to Oktoberfest, the first two hours you're there is great. But then you realize after about 90 minutes, two hours, it's like the same... Song like over right. and that's over. What I was trying to tell you about being in an Irish bar that's in town, where I'm just like, please oh, yeah. turn this crap off before someone gets killed, because <laughs> this is horrible. And Miles does the killing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, God damn, it's fan worse than every other song. <laughs> what uh, What did you like or get into as a kid that you still enjoy today? Two zero six four two one rock. This drop kicks count. Here come you two. Oh great. Hello, <laughs> Scott. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, you beautiful bitches. Hola, hola. hola. How's the day going? Well, it's doing great, man. It's rainy and crappy downtown. And, and we can barely talk. And it's dark, you know. How about you? <laughs> ah. Oh, yes. I love staring at the rain and having a good bar before yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, what did you like or get into as a kid that you enjoy today? Dude, nice and simple. The old trampoline. All right. So okay. much fun. All right. Have you ever been to a trampoline room thing? Uh, no, I haven't. I've been wanting to for a long time. Do, um, do yeah. they do they do that in an adult swim kind of fashion? Not the show on TV, but the public pool. Like, all the kids get off the trampolines. <laughs> it's adult time. You know what I mean? I thought, you uh, I, don't know. I thought you were talking about, like, a judging episode or something. No, no, no. I'm talking about, like, get these little kids off there. And, I and, I and, and the adults get, like, 15 minutes to just go off and do backflips without accidentally elbowing a kid in the head. You might just do it. It's not an accident when I hit you, kid. Uh, it might just be they do it by time. 
All right. So, like, kids are cool until, say, be 8 o'clock or something. I have not done that, but that is something I'd like to do. Look, I'm not graceful on a trampoline. I will hurt myself. But, one, I have insurance, so I care a little less. But, mm-hmm. two, it just looks fun. Yeah, just bounce around from one pod to the other. I'm sure there's more skills. And I feel safer now. there than, like, if Ted said, hey, come over. I have a trampoline. Like, I'm going to hurt myself on a residential trampoline. 100. At least in those places. My, uh, there's padding built around and all that. You know? Plus, if I call you over, like, something, <laughs> something is weird. Something yeah. is up. Like, why does he have a trampoline? It, it, I swear to God, Ted, it, it, there was a place in Columbia. First place. I've, I've never seen anything like this. All right. So my kid had a birthday party there. Everybody's just, it, it looks like uh, an air popper. Yeah, That's just awesome. pop, 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 pop. I mean, just kids just flying through the air, hands in the It is. You will laugh hysterically if you ever go to one of those places. It would is, you do it? I would do it in it a heartbeat. Is, it, it, it's just, it's entertaining just to watch. Oh, sure. yeah. it, it might have something to do with the hours, right? Because there's like super cool laser tag now. Right. But if you go later, a little later in the evening, like it's mainly just adults. Of course. It's just kids go to sleep early. Right, right. <laughs> Because they're kids. That's why you like to go later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? It's not, like pain, it's not like paintball where some adult will just stick one right between your eyes mm-hmm. and laugh because he thinks it's funny. Told you I'd dot the eye. Oh, don't worry. I've shot a lot of kids in laser tag. <laughs> I feel like if we're going to play this game, <laughs> you're getting shot. Yeah, I mean, paintball or whatever. Like, paintball hurts. It, it does. does. But that child stepped into the zone. You chose to play this. <laughs> you're not taking this flag. <laughs> <laughs> what did you like or get into as a kid that you still enjoy today? 206 421 Rock. Maybe his father should have thought about this. Yeah, he should have said, be careful. That's what he meant. <laughs> Hello, Dave. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. Hey, my uh, favorite thing now, I'm 47. I just had a grandson. He's six months old. He's a little young for him. But I started collecting Legos again. Man, they're awesome. It's it's weird because, so, okay, my daughter wait. loves Legos. I did not enjoy Legos as a kid because I'm impatient. Didn't like reading the directions. And that has not changed. But now that I'm older, we have this massive, massive bucket of Legos from all the different sets. When you buy these Legos, is it more that you want to create your own creation or you still want to create the oh, thing no. on the box? No, I like to... I'm meticulous, following the directions to me. Ah, no, so, no. And so, when I, like, I, I built the White House last week, and it was like 1,500 pieces, Jesus. and it was fun. I, I was, took it apart piece by piece, and I put it back in the bags so that someday I can do them with the grandkids. I know? was going to ask you how you're doing this, because you're basically buying toys for them with is under the... Uh, Basically, you're buying them for you. Of course. Under the ruse that you know, oh, you're yeah. buying it for your grandson. My kid's got a yeah. Christmas gift coming up that I'll not mention it. Yeah, over the last two weeks, I bought about 40 sets of Legos. I'd probably put together four or five of them. Are you I'm am- saving most of them for him. But. Are you amazed how much these Legos cost now? Oh, geez. There's a Ferrari that I, I literally just pulled into Bellevue Square. I'm going to go to the Lego store right now. There's a Ferrari I want to get that I don't think I want to pull the trigger on. It's 380 bucks. Yeah, I, I mean, would, Legos but, but are here's the thing. Insane. They I would, can be insane. I would rather have a Lego Ferrari than actually having a model Ferrari that you put together, which was something that was pretty big growing Agreed. up. Agreed, agree. Because oh, yeah. you're dealing with the glue, and it never looks that good, and it's just, I, I, I never was technical enough to be able right. to make it look Legos decent. just snapped the goddamn well, apparently, thing in place. Apparently, Lego made a full-size, full-size, one-to-one replica of the actual Ferrari, which is at the Ferrari Headquarters, okay. whatever, you know, in Italy or whatever. Dave, quick question for you before we get a break here. Uh, the Lego Land theme park in Florida is planning an expansion next year to include new rides. If you were anywhere near Winter Haven, Florida, would you go to Lego Land and check the place out? Oh, 100%. 100%. Okay. I would too. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I would be I, like, I, I would go. We're going. Yeah. Do you think they make the rides out of Legos? And would you ride it if it was? I, Legos were never my thing. They weren't mine either. I was too busy playing jokes. I just assume that you're still going to have a good time, even if you're into it or not, if you go to Lego Land. I'm, I think there'll be something different. for everybody, right? right? You know what I, mean? I don't like Disney, but I don't, well, I don't hate them, but I would not mind riding a roller coaster. What, uh, what did you like or get into as a kid that you still enjoy today? 206-421-ROCK. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. 
$20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com.